I was an enraged bro. Yeah. I was I was full of rage, I was full of passion. I was like, we ain't getting nowhere, we gotta do this ourselves. Like my philosophy at the time used to be DIY or die. Mm-hmm. You know, and I still say that to this day. Yeah. You know? And you may think like, uh, yeah. what's happened? Like you haven't reached certain heights. Cause like same way I've always been ground level then, I'm st- I stay grounded now. Mm. You know, I've had plenty of opportunities. I've moved with a lot of artists that have, that have hit top heights. Mm. You know what I mean? And I've rolled for part of the journey and I thought, I ain't really feeling these vibes. You know what I mean? Cause the schedule, mm. the, the whole thing about it, you know, but performing for the industry, like it's not really me. I'm about um, kind of doing things a little bit more from a cultural point of view. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast live and direct. Central London. Thank you, London. Or as central as you need to be. Could be, wanna be, don't wanna be anywhere else. That's a fact. Um, and you can tell a friend to tell a friend that. Um, shout out to all the shares and carers, people that have been uh, looking us from the jump and uh, keeping us out of trouble. We really, really appreciate it. Big things on the horizon over here. Um, and yeah, so keep your eyes uh, big peeled. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gknifteyheads.com and get ready for Hot Awards Summer 2024. Uh, inside the house, we're celebrating the locals and we're talking about the regional finessing between here and Belfast. My brother I've known for a very long time. Um, part of the old... Uh, South London fraternity, no less, but he's a world traveller, you understand. Do you know what I mean? Speaker's Corner original. Um, and moreover, one hell of a stylistic kind of guy on the turntables. <laughs> one, how are you, my brother? Yo, the living legend, killer, killer, man. It's so good to see you, bro. I ain't seen you in a long time, you know. I was just thinking, like, this. when you messaged me, I'm like, when's the last time I saw Keller? I see you doing this podcast, so I see you moving, I see you active, mm. and it's always good to see you, bro, man. You know? no. But I think... I'm sure I've seen you bare times, but the times I remember was when we used to rock uh, Deck Effects together. That's right. Yeah. <gasps> you were the host, oh, right? Yeah. Host you the host and, uh, yeah. and uh, always a toast. <laughs> <laughs> it was you and, you and Estelle, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. Estelle. Yeah, that's I was one right. of the unbuild DJs. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, That was one of the first places where I was actually getting a chance to uh, DJ in clubs that weren't like squat sound system type things, in London anyway, you know? I really rate your come up, man, because... <sighs> I just love the way that, you know, ground level, like, you've moved differently, but it always felt inherently right. Like, your moral compass was always there and, you know, the kind of people you DJ for and Mm. DJ at. This was like the realest of the real. I always fucking rated that about you, bro. I appreciate that, man. It's like, uh, I kind of sometimes... chop my nose off the spot my face a few times, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, the way I put, uh, don't take certain opportunities, you know? Mm. But it is, it's kind of, it's kind of like uh, how, where my soul and spirit is, where I've, where I have come up from and mm. what, I've, what I've been through in life, you know? So um, certain things I don't like to promote and I feel like we can develop our own sort of new avenues in this world, mm. you know? Especially uh, come, to, come to think of it, like, because I know this podcast is going to take me on a crazy memory lane, you know, <laughs> right now, man. I'm always thinking forward about what's next, you know what I mean? But now you've got me mm. thinking backwards. We're going to take you back like that. And also, oh. I might just add before I start, big shout out to Amy True, who definitely connected the dots on this one. Big up, okay. girl, you know. Yeah. Crawley, hold tight, you know it is. Like you say, it's um, about going back to the back to the start. Yeah, that's you? what I was going to say, like, because... Um, as you know, I uh, developed a few events and got some things popping. You That's know? right. But the reason I was, that happened is because so many doors were closed, you know? Absolutely, a lot, a lot I of the club, A lot of the clubs, the hip-hop nights in London were mm. really recycling the same lineups. Mm. And they didn't really know. That there was a, when we were doing squat parties, there was at least up to like 30 rap groups that mm. people don't know that we're running on our sound, uh, you know. that You might have seen that open mic at Deal Reel and all that, but it wasn't until we started doing Speaker's Corner that um, people had more of a platform to really show what they're about and get out there and push their records and collaborate and everything else. So Explain a bit yeah. more about Speaker's Corner to those from out of the UK, because honestly, this was a seminal, you know, at, like you say, at the optimum time when it was needed. Yeah, well, you know, like, Speaker's Corner isn't going all the way back, but... It's definitely where I've probably got known, 
Mm. You know what I mean? Because I was doing bits before that. I used to DJ for Deal Real Open Mic on a Friday. I was on the Itch FM doing the Homegrown Rap Show. God, yeah, you were. You know? Fuck, yeah. I took over from the Disorder doing that. Um, and obviously, like I said, I was doing a lot of um, sound system stuff, like uh, warehouse raves, squat mm. parties, you know what I mean? And I was also street teaming a lot for um, Deck FX. Mm -hmm. um, Paris London Connection, you remember that one? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> I forgot about the course. I remember it. Yeah, that was the old WKD. Yeah, right? that's right. That's yeah. what it was called because I keep on telling people about yeah. this WKD show yeah, yeah, yeah. event. It was, it was. That was before yeah. Kung Fu started there. That's well, right. You know? Wow. Yeah, but even before Paris Long Connection, I was street teaming for Scratch, which is really where I kind of like got to know a lot of people. Yeah. It was me and Solo One, actually. Yeah, big up writer. Solo One. Come yeah, on. Yeah, big up Solo One, man. Yeah. Like, you know, half of his stickers I think I put up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm joking. Yeah, well, He's prolific yeah, with the stickers. He made I was moves. Rolling, yeah. if, if anyone that was around at that point in time <clears throat> knew that... I don't know. It, it, it all patterned up with Solo One, the albums that were really releasing, the, the versatility of the club nights and just the general proactiveness of everybody that had a skill was just out and being busy it was a great time for the scene wasn't it yeah it was brilliant man I mean obviously I come from Belfast so and my history is in breaking which I was never any good at <laughs> which is why I got into the DJ you know what I mean because like uh, the elders around me when I got into breaking in Belfast were more advanced you know what I mean so it was intimidating to I just want to be able to be badged from from the day one, you know what I mean? Impatience is a key. It's it's terrible, yeah. You've got to learn foundation takes years. You Not know so what cheap mean? to enter, is it? It's, you know, you've got to nah, break, break some shit. So luckily enough with the DJ, and there wasn't that many people that were more advanced than me, mm. so I could dedicate the time to advance at a slower level and get to a place where I got to, you know what I mean? Mm. Where I feel quite confident with the, de with the decks now, like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, with the street team, you know, with, uh, with, with Solo One and all that, I kind of felt like... Promoting these nights is really off our sweat, you know what mm. I mean? Getting the flyers out, putting the posters up, standing outside the clubs, doing all the real hard graft, mm. you know what I mean? So with Speaker's Corner and I, I kind of realised, yo, I could do this. Like, I'm doing it for every other night and not getting no bring in really half the time with stuff, you know? It's me just wanting to be part of it, you mm. know what I mean? But then also recognising that there's so many crews out here that are just not getting no platform, you know, including ones that I'm DJing for, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, um, so yeah, we started that night and it was a bit, bit messy to begin with. I think it was like 2004. Mm -hmm. I was doing stuff from like 99 warehouse parties and a few pop-up open mics and this, that, mm -hmm. and the next, you know what I mean? But 2004, um, started that night. Brixton Jam, it used to be called Bar Loca. When I first started, it says oh, yeah. Bar Loca on the flyer, you know? Mm. Yeah, but it, would, it is Brixton Jam ownership. They just bought it. And it was a bit of a dive, so it kind of fitted our vibe at the time because we were mm. coming out of squats, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it was, it was, the transition was easy for that, you know. But at the same time, I was thinking, like, should we, should we not? Because it's almost like um, coming out of that on the ground mm. to, to a legitimate stage. Mm -hmm. But then I was thinking, like, yeah, we need to have a bit of balance, like, get, get on these stages and still do what we're doing on the underground, you know? Yeah, almost like making a platform, a profile platform, that was open to everybody as opposed to that, like you say, that niche lane of people from a from a, a scene background. Mm. Is that what you mean? Because it's the way it came across when I when I, when it was when it was burgeoning and it was coming to fruition. What was going on for me? It felt like it was the, almost like a premier place for people to kind of get up and do their thing. Oh, it was definitely a place to sharpen your swords. Like yeah. You can't go there and just be whack. Like, mm. you know what I, mean? I mean, obviously some people have got more confidence in a sense. So, mm. but we, 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 with people like Honey Brown and all that there, we're throwing mm. people off the stage. Mm. <laughs> oh, she don't play you know, that one. <laughs> people are getting thrown off the stage regularly, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, and there's been like, it's been a lot of fair share of drama and all that there as well, you know, but... Mm. Fundamentally, though, it was a really good melting pot of styles, mm -hmm. you know, because, like, we're on the corner of Angel Town, you know what I mean, PDC and all like there. And then we've got, like, more sort of the Nikki side of the spectrum, you know, coming from out of town. And then you get this melting pot in there as well, which mm -hmm. can be, you know, a bit of a, 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 a Tinder uh, pot type situation. But at the same time, everyone knows we're there for a vibe, you know. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, like I said, it didn't come out. Of, it didn't come out of nowhere. It came out of like the the background of Deal Real, and um, m me just being like um, very much like getting out there and meeting everybody, you know. Mm. Like, cause I, I was meeting a lot of people in the London hip hop scene that didn't know each other, and I thought that was mad, you know, cause I'm coming from Ireland, like, and I'm getting yeah. to know everybody quick. So I thought, let me try and just let's 
mobilize the vibes, you know, and get people together. And um, at Starter Speakers Corner, man, there was a lot of real great energy, you know, because yeah. I was with, um, I think we were already in Chain of Command, hmm. which was a group that Manage put together, you know. Big up Manage. Whoa. Big up Manage. You know, like, um, the f Speakers Corner day one, first Speakers Corner, would not have happened without Manage because hmm. people didn't know me, really. So it was more like Manage making the calls, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, do you want to come and do this thing? Um, around the second one, like, Manager's like saying, we're not going to be able to do this again. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, let me see. Let me, I'm on the call. I'm on the phone there. Like, you know, bring it on. Yeah, I like a straight fight. Big, third one was big. And, um, <laughs> but to be honest, the first, probably in the first year, um, I don't drink now, yeah, but I did back then. Not uh, mad, but, you know, getting through stuff. Like, I'm just having a drink like everyone else. But And it wasn't, it was, it was probably put together a bit messy, you know. Not in a bad way. It was like rap act after hmm. rap act after rap act. You or know what I mean? or can after can after can. It was this <laughs> kind of balance of dysfunction, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's a mad little um, sidebar to that. It's like one time my sister and my niece has come to visit, yeah? We went out to see The Lion King, yeah? Mm. And I was really impressed. Like, I, that sounds mad, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a curveball, isn't it? But yeah, I was yeah. mad impressed by the how... Because I'm, I'm used to, like, artists turning up late for their set me having to remix everything on the spot, and then I see this production that I know everyone's been there from the beginning, they've yeah. rehearsed this, there's yeah. like sound, there's prop changes. I think, I want to make this event um, a bit deeper. I want to take this a bit more mm. seriously, you know what I mean? Around that, about that time, I was starting to take my health very serious as well. So, so what, what, what date was this when this kind of came to, to that? Uh, probably just like halfway through the second year, you'll see that I introduced the Speaker's Corner Quartet. Mm. Yes, you know, as the house, as I put them together, they never even met each other before that day. You oh, know? so they come together because I already knew what it was going to sound like: it's bad and cello, course. flute, drum, and um, double bass, drawing up the thing. And I know that they've all got this garage hip hop vibe about yeah. them. You know what I mean? Like me and Quake have been like working together on a variety of things already. You know, me and Biscuit. Biscuit was mm. like teaching me to scratch. We got Biscuit. Biscuit's a Jeez. bad man. And an yeah. instrumentalist and a half, man. He's brilliant. Yeah. He's a brilliant. And he can cook up a curry like crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I like uh, turn up at their rehearsals just to get some munch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, a couple of days early. Yeah, right. yeah man. So you had the whole orchestra and everything. Well, it was a quartet, off. you know what I mean? Obviously, sometimes we'll invite more musicians, but the idea was, though, I wanted it to be a level of, uh, I wanted to present the thing a bit more better. Mm. You know what I mean? As artists, what can we do? We, we, we should be artists, right? Like the stage isn't like what you're recording to reproduce that you're listening to. You, you want to see a show, be part of a show. Mm. Because there was so much improvisation involved in the show as well, you know. It's mainly open mic, you know. So I just get, like, the band to learn, like, you know, all hip-hop classics, all the Wu-Tang, Mob Deep, Dilla, all that type of thing. Wow. You know what I mean? And they're playing that, jamming it out, and there's just back-to-back -back bars. And uh, a lot of the MCs are not used to working with band, you know, like... Uh, Maybe turn around, like mm. asking them to rewind. Yeah. But even <laughs> the frequencies, bro, like a lot, <laughs> like the cellos and the violins. They as soon as they start hearing bass, yeah, yeah. all starts feeding back and all yeah. that stuff. We were very conscientious lyrically speaking as well, you know, because uh, the crew that we founded it on with uh, mm. were kind of like artist activists, you know, mm. and um, not just like um, badge wearing, uh, protest attending activists. I mean, people are actually working in the communities with youth and having impact, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And realizing the damage that a lot of uh, what gets put out into the mainstream does, mm. you know what I'm saying? So we were very mindful to make sure that we're dealing with something that is steering people in the right direction, mm. you know what I'm saying? And that, uh, but saying that, everybody was welcome to come and chat whatever agrees they wanted. But the overall vibe was mm. leaning towards. Yeah, we gotta like be mindful of the of of what we're putting out there in our mm. art, you know. But performance wise, yeah, I wanted integrated a lot more different. Man, I had like a lot of deep, prolific spoken word artists on stage. It wasn't just rap. I would have singers. Give me know? some names. Give, give me some of the poets that have been on. Um, back in the day, to me, they were like the baddest of the time. There was a whole crew called Best Kept Secret. That would be Eamon Noir, Shakara. Um, there was a guy called Short Man who used to run a night called A Voice, venting out internal creative energies, and his night was super dope. Um, David J, 
you know, <gasps> the local pugilist. <gasps> You know, some hip hop heads might remember him from old school freestyles he used to do on the 279 show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's also an amazing performance poet, you know. And then obviously a lot of the caliber of the rap artists that would come through and touch the stage or their level of poetry barring is... Really? Yeah. So what? just an alternative slant of what they would normally do? They'd come and try some stuff out? No, I'm saying like... Um, Substance wise, mm -hmm. the rap is on par with the spoken word. For sure. You know what I mean? Like, especially the caliber of artists that we were mm -hmm. always having there, you know? Because, like, I mean, it's hard to mention somebody who didn't touch the mic at yeah. Speaker's Corner. You know, you'd be, you'd, you'd be struggling to name people that didn't come through. If they weren't on the lineup, they were on the open mic. Generally, like, if they were well known artists, we'd have them on the, um, on the uh, lineup. Mm. But you'll find that because people saw it as a bit of a, sp a social, mm. that everybody will be there anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And even some of the best, like, ciphers were happening outside. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, I've seen video footage of some like, iconic, like, marathon rap sessions. You know, there's one with Stig of the Dump and Sonny Jim, which is jokes. Whoa. You know? Like, mate, there's so many people. Big up Stig. I ain't heard that name for a bit neither. That's why yeah. people love Stig. I saw Stig doing something. I need to catch up with Stig as well, man. Big up Stig. Yeah. Um, EO Dub, Big up world Sonny champion, well, two time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sonny Jim. Mm. Both of them are active. Sonny Jim just released that album. I think yeah. it's coming out next this week. Yeah, with Orifice. Out to he, he lives up there. I've been waiting for him to come on the podcast from this one. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah him and Pavan have just put out uh, yeah, an that's album. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Bad. Big up them. Yeah. You know, and Stig, I swear, is putting out some stuff right now as well. Mm. Oh, really you know? nice. What about Manage? What's Manage doing, man? Manage, you know what's manage, manage is um, obviously like, you know, we can leap from this to the next, you know, like, but in a, in a lineage way from from me and Manage. Manage is like the, my first sort of like Cody in mm. hip hop in London, you know what I mean? Um, outside of doing my own thing with the street team and the DJing mm. here and there, you know. But uh, as a live performance, I was DJing for Manage and um, kind of had like an extended crew called. Um, Expect No Mercy, <laughs> which uh, had CLG and DX and a few other people. And then we had a funny group called the Kebab Shop MCs, <laughs> yeah, which was on some kind of grave dealers gore shit, you know. <laughs> that was Kissy K and all that crew, you know, the bigger villain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, big up Kissy K. Um, and then obviously we moved, um, we made the big power move with uh, Caxton Press, <laughs> you know. That okay. Was like a, that was another big group that we put together. Um I can't even remember what year, you know what I mean? But we had like a good sort of three year good run, run yeah. of that uh, Shame the Devil album. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. album got put in um, the British Library for its um, lyrical um, wow. preservation or whatever, you know what I mean? What was that it's, like? That must have been crazy. Yeah, it's big. big. And we won the uh, best album of the year as well with Wordplay magazine that year as well. Big which up is, Wordplay. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. And we had the opportunity, we were uh, we toured with uh, Public Enemy, we toured with Jedi Mind Tricks, we toured with Immortal Technique. We did a bag of shit, you know what I'm saying? Fuck, dude, you know, you went about, boy. So that was a vibe, you know? So obviously, yeah. Caxton Press uh, uh, lasted as long as it lasted. Um, what happened to it? Well, how come you guys... Uh, I think some artistic differences, a yeah. few um, kind of petty things happening, you know, when yeah. f when people get too close and stuff, you know what I mean? Everyone's yeah, yeah. cool with each other, you know what I mean? But it's hard, man. Any any mm. Anyone who's ever in any type of group is going to tell you there's, like, there's always going to be something, like... Um, where someone might rub each other up the wrong way or whatever, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But everybody, everybody individual, beautiful people, man. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We were there for a reason and we were, we, we were brother. I thought we were a great, mm -hmm. great group, you know? Mm. Um, I mean, it's just great to have it archived and have it documented. Exactly. It's yeah. so rare these yeah, days, man. man. Yeah, so since then, it. I think um, Manage done a lot of his solo stuff. And um, then he started a label called Lab 79. I don't hmm. know if you've heard of that. I've heard of it, yeah. Okay, of well, that's a, a kind of a combination. Again, roots back to Speaker's Corner because Conflicts is part of it. Hmm. Conflicts did the whole Character Assassins mixtapes with Chemo, and uh, nice. you know, we helped to put them out uh, as well. I don't know if you remember Character Assassins mixtapes. I remember the mixtapes, yeah, of course. Yeah, that had everybody. I was, I was like a who's who of the mm -hmm. day, especially people who were coming to Speaker's. You know, it was all Rhyme Asylum, Elite Team. It was certainly, a, a, yeah, it was certainly at a. A stable of artists mm -hmm. that really had a that fitted the, the 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 lane and the category. Do you know what I mean? They had the, the, it was a certain identity. There was uh, because of what I guess filled it out. But mm. if you came as well, you'd realize that it was m even more dynamic For than sure. that. You know what I mean? Because we would have everyone like big P and Scheme, um, yeah. and there was all sorts of people on the, on the stage. You know. Um, 
it's not it's not one particular style, you know. But definitely there was a big conglomerate of us that would roll together quite often, mm. namely like the IRS mm. crew, mm -hmm. elite team, chain of command, manage, um, Rhyme Asylum. Mm -hmm. um, so many crews that are not really really popping right now, like mm. R.I.P. Sunken Heads, if you remember Sunken Heads, that was Steezer's crew. Oh, okay, well, yeah, Steezer yeah. DJ was Steezer's brother, 12, 12, 12 milli. You must have seen a lot of Come and Go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's man. Pretty, yeah. And it's not so much just, like, even Ammo, A-M-M-O. I don't uh -huh. remember them. There's yep. so many dope-ass groups, man. Wow. And it's not so much that there's Come and Go. It's like a now, transformation, you know, like, they're, they're, they're in this project, then they're in this project. Yeah. You know, which is like what I was saying about Manage. He's doing his label, Lev 79, which is almost like a fusion of um, Caxton Press, Chain of Command, and Rhyme Asylum, because there's... Um, manage there's a um, skirmish mm -hmm. there's a uh, conflicts um, there's a menace Mendoza you know there's a, quite a lot of artists in that little camp there you know mm. and um, I love the approach because he's not trying to uh, be some type of superstar label it's more of a creative flow mm. you know what I mean and just it's, it's art because it's it's, it's ripping out of us. Mm. You know, we, mm. we need an outlet, which again, actually, I have to say, is one of the reasons that brought me to start Speaker's Corner. Yeah. It wasn't just that uh, I had this idea, like, I was, I was, I was enraged, bro. Yeah. I was, I was full of rage, I was full of passion. I was like, we ain't getting nowhere, we gotta do this ourselves. Like, my philosophy at the time used to be DIY or die, mm -hmm. you know, and I still say that to this day, yeah. you know. And you may think, like, uh, yeah. what's happened? Like, you haven't reached certain heights. Because, like, same way I've always been ground level then, I'm st I stay grounded now, mm. you know? I've had plenty of opportunities. I've moved with a lot of artists that have, that have hit top heights, mm. you know what I mean? And I've rolled for part of the journey, and I thought, I ain't really feeling these vibes, you know what I mean? Because the schedule, mm. the, the whole thing about it, you know, but performing for the industry, like, it's not really me. I'm about um, kind of doing things a little bit more from a cultural point of view, mm. you know? More power to that. Yeah. Where do those, where those core principles come from, brother? What, what is it that, what is it that drives you? Um, obviously, like, my background is I'm from, I'm from West Belfast, you know, the Republican part of Belfast, you know, and I grew up in, through the Troubles, you know? We had the British occupation and mm. we had, like, what you could call like, some type of civil... Uh, disturbing <laughs> the thing that we call the troubles, you know, because I mean? we have a sense of humor, you know, in, yeah. in Ireland, like you know, with the king, with the masters of tragic comedies. Um, so yeah, I guess early seeds come from there being fairly anti-establishment. Um, and I was looking enough at an early age of like fourteen, I left home because my house actually got burnt down for the second time because of the troubles. You wow. Know? Yeah, but like my part of Belfast was a little bit like you know, West Bank style flex, you know what I'm saying? Um, but oh, you I must have seen a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of stuff, but I'm not going to try to chat about it too much because sometimes when I do a podcast, like they're asking mm. me like, where do you start? Mm. And I start saying, I'm from, from Belfast. Tell me more about that. That's the whole fucking podcast. Don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, I, ch I yeah. chose a different angle on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it, man. But yeah, I was just saying, like I was only bringing that up because um, at that early age, um, I was out on the road, you know, and I was very fortunate to kind of be taken under the wing of the Belfast City Breakers. We are my, they're, they're, they're my foundation wow. in, in hip hop. Yeah, they you know? And they are cross community, you know what I mean? They're from mm. both sides of the divide there, you know? So um, we, were, we never considered ourselves to be political, but we actually read uh, an article one time. I would really liked the, what it said. It says that we made like the ultimate kind of political act by rising above the politics of the day. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that, that's how I always felt about hip hop's power, you know what I mean? Because uh. I was in this sort of like blinkered space of like it's us and them and da da da, and then I saw and then I found hip hop and hip hop was like just opened up the whole world view. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, like, everything coming out of New York, everything coming out of London, everything coming out of the world. Uh, from a b boy's perspective, especially, yeah. it's it's a very welcoming space. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's um, how would you say? Um, it's based on merit. You, yeah. know I mean? you have to have skill. You need to have something. What you bring in as well. Yeah, positive it, combat. Like yeah. what you back bring then in. as well, it was still like you still had to have your own thing going on as well. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. couldn't just go in like a clone. No, you've got to be in yeah. with an identity, originality, exactly. everything. You know what I mean? So I loved everything about hip hop. Mm. It really just empowered me. You know what I mean? Mm. And my best friend in the Belfast Sea Breakers at that time was my boy Boo, and me and him were kind of like mushroom buggy buddies. You know what I nice. mean? So like we used to like breaking in space type vibes, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, with BCB, you know, we're doing cross-community um, workshops and that, you know what I mean? We're trying to, like, uh, 
just spread the positivity, you know, because I kind of know now, like I've done a lot of youth projects since then, and to me it's like paying forward mm. what, what, what I was gifted through oh, my... Paying op- forward. Yeah, yeah, man, paying forward what I was gifted by the Belfast City Breakers, who mm. are also called the Trouble Minded Crew. So ultimately I give all my, all my respect to the Belfast City Breakers. I think, I think there should be a monument to the twins City. in Belfast. We'll talk. You know? Yeah, we had the Madden Twins. They were like the old school B-boys in Belfast, you know what I'm saying? The and like I said, there wasn't that many t- uh, DJs. Like, uh, it was my boy DJ Scony, who was also in the Belfast City Breakers, that um, taught me um, to DJ. Well, I, I played on, I practiced on his, his set, basically. Well, I mean, so he I, really gave you the... Yeah. He paid forward for you. Yeah. No, he, he, he was... not Yeah. Nah, big up my boy Scony. I, I, in Belfast, I think, or in Ireland, the only real proper dope ass crew and DJs at the time would have been Scary Era at DJ Mech. DJ yeah. Mech. Yeah, yo. Bad man. Wait. Big inspiration for me, DJ Mech. Yo, he's he I've been I think I've been in New York and didn't leave yeah. the bar for ages, me. Yeah, I've, I know. That's the that's the only thing where we can't vibe on because obviously I don't drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a rare Irish man who doesn't drink. Big you know up, Mech. I mean? Yeah. Come, well, yeah, yeah, you say that though, but um yeah. I was gonna ask you about you know your your health because you you're definitely a transformed man, and you've got, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, your health is wealth, which should be for everybody, I might add. Yeah, no, I mean, this is just me being very analytical, like, about, uh, of the world, because I'm a super cynical dude, you know, mm. and I think that they're trying to kill us in every, <laughs> every way, you know what I mean? Bang, so, as the algorithm, agree. <laughs> Hold on to your seatbelts, people. Oh, dear. <laughs> cool, guys, you are good. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I mean, this is why I'm shadow banned to, 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 to the bottom of the barrel, man. Uh, you know really? what I mean? Shadow yeah, man, I had all my socials removed um, in 22, 21, uh. as well, for talking about, you know, the jib jab and all that. Mm. You know, because yeah, and right now with the talking about the genocide, but you know, I, I I'm just somebody who talks his mind. I don't really care about the um, what bridges I burn. You know, mm. in fact, I was even using the alias DJ Burnt Bridges because <laughs> I like to burn the bridges with Babylon, man. I like burnt bridges. I trying bridges. to get, I ain't trying that. to get those opportunities, man. You know, Red Bull can't can't get me to do nothing for them. Mm. You know, because like I say, I study health, man. I study everything to do with what I call generational health. You gotta look after your health if you wanna ha- if you wanna plant healthy seed. You know, mm. what I mean? you wanna you, you, you they talk you talk about generational wealth. It's really in your genetics. Yeah. You know, you need to eat well. You need to exercise. You need to get your mind right. Get your heart right. You know what I mean? Wow. Um, this kind of falls in line with the paying forward as well. Mm. Health is wealth. It's got age, isn't it? I think being being in a place in your head where you know recognize a level of mortality and how important what you love is and paying it forward to the next generation mm. it's all it's all ebbs and flows of mm. really what our age dictates right i guess so man we definitely need to like um create pathways for the youth to come through mm. where you know they're not being poisoned or they're not being funneled into um like like an industry mm. like a music industry for example you know a lot of people are just not getting their just rewards mm. for their work, you know, even like top artists, you see them complaining yeah. about their revenue streams and this, that, and the next, you know, and you, you're kind of limited to what you can say and all this because of the uh, grip that industrial forces has on people, you know. So mm. I really like the whole, like, I'm sticking with that DIY or die philosophy. Like the more you can do off your own back and merit mm. or as a cooperative movement, Yes, and, uh, you can make those moves, you know, yeah. like invest in yourself, like, you know, um, obviously anybody with any sense starting out in music should know that they're not about to like hit a pot of gold, you know what I mean? You actually need to spend a lot more money on yourself than anything else. You need to invest in what you're doing. Mm. And um, especially for me, who shoots himself in the foot all the time, even though I get occasional opportunities, um, certain things I don't want to work with or do. Um, I also know that as long as I can... Stay mis- keeping the game DJing, for example, mm. that's my bread and butter mm. life um, thing, you know. Mm. Uh, organizing my own events and um, like my next plan, actually, like what I'm trying to set up right now, I feel is um, a good avenue for people to kind of um, emulate and copy. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm kind of inspired with the way Jai Shaka was moving. Okay. Because you know? he took over halls and brought his own sound in and would run um, door and bar, right? And that's going right back to how we did squat party, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking about, right, going back to how we did then, yeah? But 
through more of a legal avenue, like the way sound systems do their thing. But rather than being just about bar, um, I'm thinking more along the lines of market, you know. I want to have spaces from pop-up markets, more uh, artisan produce, you know, more produce that people are making. Get, 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 get the space together, put the sound, you know, everyone can eat out of that. Or like Kilburn I mean? Market or... On the move, Kilburn Market on the move, you know what I mean? Do pop-up Kilburn Market, you know? Yeah, with sound system, with vibes. God, that's you good. Know uh, Brixton Market. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and a health-focused thing as well, you know? Like, uh, I'm not some Fugazi, because um, uh, there's a lot of online gurus chatting us that and the next that we need to have, kind of yeah. need to have conversations about. And there's a lot of... Um, I know exactly the kind of markets and spots. I know this, it's an open house where, you know, mm. the, the more the merrier, this is spreading the word, but um, you want ones that really do support local communities, don't mm -hmm. you? Well, I, I, that itself should be a local community. Like, Without cause, question. Because the market, in fact, me start going into spe doing Speaker's Corner, like I say, a lot of it was us being pressured out of doing squat parties, mm. squat rave, like proper squat parties. And they weren't dingy back then as well, by the way. Like a lot of the people that you see doing set design for festivals now, like last year and that, they were working with us back oh, then. Really? Yeah, man. We, we, what? The spaces you would come to, to for a rave were, were like, just like beyond your like imagination, you know? Like there was the decor was out of the world, the themes, everything. We were, it was really popping. Squat has like this connotation in the same way. I don't know, uh, graffiti or tattoos or you know these kind of uh, buzzwords, raves that you know they signal. They conjure up an idea, you yeah. know, but it's because there's a truth in the, the idea, you know. What I mean, which is why I'm t making the e extra effort to, to explain that it yeah. was a bit more bougie than people might expect, mm. you know. And degenerate. <laughs> it's a mixture, you know what I mean? Everyone can fit in in these places, you know? But it did get really bad, just like when they brought in the criminal justice bill and a lot of other stuff. Obviously, a lot of those uh, set peeps have all moved to the festivals and deservingly so they're getting paid. But it did leave a, a big dent where it was just dingy squats, a load of people doing ketamine and all that. Completely not my vibe at all. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Especially, like I said, I had that inspiration from the Lion King. Mm. Let me, let me um, present something amazing, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, um, so people are actually getting a show. I don't want to just overload people with rap, 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 rap all night. Yeah. Let's, uh, let, let's, how can we present the show so like everybody, everybody is getting um, um, you know, presented in the best possible light? You know, so that's part and parcel of being, you know, the promoter that people. Yeah, I mean, should I know have. I, I'm a promoter by default. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I was, the, I, I took the lead initiative. You mm. know what I mean? But I'm the DJ. You know what I'm saying? I'm I've always been motivated as a DJ to put on these dances. Mm. You know, these shows as a DJ. Like so, obviously, people will put you in the promoter category. You know, because you're like the man everyone's talking to, and I was doing all the heavy lifting in regards mm. to getting the flyers. In the end, I was making all the flyers, doing everything myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that's just because I'm a bit of a... Um, not not control thing, like, but I've got... Um, I don't know how to say it, you know, like um, quality control, maybe? Yeah, <laughs> but also multitasking <laughs> comes with its own burdens and you can't... Yeah. You know, the moment you start delegating to people, is moment you got to tell everybody thirteen times how to do <laughs> something in the different in the different yeah. categories of what you would normally do yourself. Right? Yeah, as well, like if you <laughs> want something done, do it yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Mum and Dad still together? Well, that's a long story. <laughs> thought I'd just throw something in there that might change the dynamics of. Uh... <laughs> that's a long story. Uh, yeah. You know, without getting into all the drama of my life and that, yeah, I would say that I'm quite happy that the um, amends have uh, been made and bridges have been built again and that the, my mum and my dad are actually um, getting on well with each other now. Good. Um, yeah, and, um, you know, I've got my sisters and all my nieces around me and that, and all my family back home in Belfast, obviously. So, um, yeah, man, I'm actually got a, a gig this year that is one of my big highlight gigs that I'm looking forward to. And I said, I'm going to be playing for my mum's ADF. Oh, wow. Yeah. <gasps> on top that of a hotel so in Belfast. Sick. We'll be on top of the Merchant Hotel. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be digging into, like, 50s jukebox rock and roll, 60s, Come 70s. Oh, my God. Know? Yeah, I'm going to chop it up on a bit of a hip-hop style, you know. We were I mean? only talking about this before we started, you know what I mean? I want to hear some sad but true mixed in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not going to do that to my mum. My mum's more into the kinks and Rolling Stones and stuff. Da -na 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 -na. I'm going to have fun with that, man. Eesh, yeah, yeah, man. 
jukebox classics, you know, like... Damn right. But Little Richard. Oh, uh, yeah. Come on. Oh, I'm really looking forward to it. possibly go wrong. It works <laughs> treat. Oh, yeah, I'm man. already dressed for it, though, so, you know. Yeah, you man. You've got, <laughs> you got that kind of... What do you got in Gadar? Cheeky kind of... I mean, not now. I'm just on. trying to be more colourful, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, well, yeah. I think... Um, I guess as well, a lot of the artists I'm working with as well has been encouraging me to be more um, colourful. Because, like, we could chat about speakers and... I haven't even talked about end of the week. You yeah, know, yeah. But, um, some of the artists I'm working with right now, like uh, you know, you know the band the Noisettes. Of course. Yeah, the singer Shingi. Yeah. Um, yeah, I work with Shingi quite a lot. You know, I've been DJing a lot of her parties, nice. warming up a lot of her concerts, traveling around, doing stuff. With She's Shingi. a bad vocalist. She's amazing, man. Yeah. Shingi is my G. Yeah. For real, for real. Like, and I actually know her from old school New Cross as well, where we all live. And <laughs> I used to squat, rave together, and jam together on a graph tip as well like no one used to be part of our little clique as well <laughs> like, no? pick up no yeah because no one's a bad guitarist yeah that, right? South as well yeah he's a bad boy wicked guitarist you yeah. know what I mean so it was like me him Shingy even Manage back then we mm. were like a melting pot like you know like a crazy melting pot you don't expect to see together you know what yeah, I mean yeah, but yeah. like we were all rocking our thing that's so new cross right there. Exactly, new cross yeah, in a yeah, bottle yeah That's it's not so much like it, that man. now you know but it was then man when I moved there it was like a real an amalgamation of like, yeah. like crusties, Rasta man, yeah. um, man then from the hood, Goldsmiths uh, College, students, and yeah, exactly. They're it's, thrown in for good measure. Yeah, some hippies, a couple of lost souls, you know what I mean. But everyone kind of like getting on with each other and enjoying. Mm. <laughs> you know, like they've locked it down now, though. It's not really the same vibe. You no. know, they haven't yeah. gone full full gentry, but I can see the direction they're trying to take it. Yeah, I'm still man. waiting for the nice cafes and stuff, to be honest. Yeah, at least man. have a nice cafe. Yeah, man, because I'm bougie personally, man. Yeah. I'm hood bougie. Like, I'm hood hipster. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You know, bring in... I, I'm happy. I bring, where's the golden milk and shit, man? Yeah, cross, yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another artist I'm working with now is uh, Green Tea Peng. You know, Green oh, Tea Peng? She's awesome, man. Yeah, she's incredible. Bro. Love Green Tea yeah. Peng. Yeah. She's a sweetheart as well. She's beautiful, bro. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. awesome. I've been working with her uh, um, and her fella, Ashley, um, Haya, Percy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did... Um, a little sort of pop-up, a bit like the idea I just told you about. Mm -hmm. We did a pop-up festival in Portugal. We've done two of them so far. Oh, shit. Yeah, man. On a, on a, on a, like a riverbank, uh, kind of side of beach yeah. cafe type thing. Really rural. Wow. Campsite sort of flex. Like, um, it's like uh, people all around kind of our generation coming out with their toddlers and that, you know what I mean? Wow. People having a little... A little talk and some streams, that type mm. of vibe, you know mm. what I mean? Healthy food and the, and the market, you know? Selling, yeah. selling all that kind of, a lot of hippie shit, really, you know nice. what I mean? But it's good. We're planting seeds for it, man. That was the second one. We want to do more. We want to maybe make it a regular thing. Let it grow. Not too mad, but want to yeah. let it grow. Might even try and do one in a beefer as well, because um, linked up with uh, Nightmares on Wax, he's staying nice. out there. You know? Man, yeah. these are names, bro. These yeah. are names. I know, but this is the Your thing. Your reputation. I'm, I mean, and No, no, a lot of these artists, though, like, because Speaker's Corner was like open mic stuff, innit? So I've been doing this how long, you know what I mean? Yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of names that are names now were like open mic. When Growing. I, you know what I mean? In so no I've, I've, right. I've come up with a lot of people come up through platforms that I've helped build. But how do you, how do you, there must have been countless times where you're seeing them on stage and you think stuff, yeah, this one's got something. She or he, absolutely, did. yeah, all the time. Mate, I remember Chain of Command. We did a tour in Ireland. You know who our support act was? He was only fourteen years old, Maverick Saber. Wow, he tore it down, man. And I knew from the moment this guy is going. He's like a little heartthrob. All the girls love him, <laughs> and he's amazing. You know, <laughs> yeah, and back yeah. then he used to rap a lot more. You know, and he had a bit more like. Ah! Uh, I used to love him, man. He, he would like play the guitar, sing his songs. Like um, I need. He already had that song in the in the in the canon. Like from when he wow. was young, I heard that song. I'm like, this is a household name God, right, right there, man. Yeah. You know, and he's one of many, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and to be honest with you, this, I'm, I'm more disheartened by the ones that I see with that same potential, not, not having that potential re realised, you know what I mean? There's who is somebody that could, who's somebody that you say, that may not even be on the circuit anymore, but at the time you're like, yo, they should have blown. Oh, wow. You, you need to jog my memory for that one. I can mention mm. somebody who's moving right now that I think Do should it. get a lot of love. Uh, there's a sister called Vizaka. Vizaka? Yeah. Uh, v i s a k a Visaka. Google that shit. Yeah, she you probably got like two thousand followers on her Instagram or something. But like to me, she's up there. Wow. Brilliant artist. You know, I've actually been DJing for. A, we did a little tour in um, Bulgaria and surrounding countries recently, and it was, wow. it was really beautiful. I really like her vibe. It's somewhere between a Chronix meets Kendrick Lamar fusion. Really? You know, I mean, it's an unusual fusion. But it's really you know what though, what makes you really special as a as a curator is because of the events that you've done 
coupled with the background of DJing mm. f- within a live circuit, mm. stepping into those kind of shoes, which almost um, allows for almost like a tour management slash elder to look after and be a part of a tour like that mm-hmm. as a DJ. Yeah, man. I do, like, that. Yeah, I do that. I do that regularly. Yeah, it's far between. You know what I mean? I do that regularly, man. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of tours, it's it's, um, it's just us on the road. We don't have tour manager. Like, yeah. you know, but I've got the gumption to mm. make sure we've got the flights, the ground transport, the pick up, the hotel, the nice meal. Mm. I'm especially fussy. I need to make sure that I'm getting fed properly. You know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, you know, also work with, they've got their particular requirements as well, you know. Like I love how you move, bro. I do. I, <laughs> I want to make sure fantastic. that people are looked after as well. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not there to take the piss out of any of the tour operators either or the mm. concert. Like, mm. to me, it's like everyone should be getting the best of all worlds. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I've been, like, before I started doing club nights and that, I was like um, washing glasses. I was uh, picking up glasses. Mm-hmm. I made my way to bar manager. You know, I've, uh, uh, you know, I've gone to every aspect. Hospitality, of what I, essentially. Yeah. yeah, but especially in clubs, you mm. know, nightlife. Like, so I've worked every aspect of that. You know what I mean? So I know everyone's role and everyone's valuable mm. uh, space in that, you know what I mean? Mm. And I'm not a big fan of uh, egotistical mm. divas, you know what I mean? Especially when they ain't got the skills to yeah. prove the thing, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm looking at them like, man. Come with the skills before the ego, would you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so tour-wise as well, like obviously like I, um, I had the good fortune of DJing for Roots Maneuver for a mm. good, s- good sprint, you know. Wow. Probably about two years I was doing some European tours and festivals with Roots Maneuver. Um, I kind of abandoned the final tour because I knew it wasn't really uh, in the best of health and I was hoping that uh, we would kind of cancel that tour. And I did end up getting some bad reviews, but you mm-hmm. know, people, I want people to know that um, they should give Roots some grace, you know what mm. I mean? Because he had a, a brain aneurysm. And wow. Yeah, man, you know what I mean? It's easy just to cry about like someone's performance, mm. you know what I mean? But you have to understand, like, uh, you know, maybe, yeah, uh, yeah, you have to understand what people are going through, you know? I think people take that for granted with their artists, don't you? Yeah, you think they're just robots. They're yeah. going to come out every night and then night and be like, just uh, smash it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some can. Yeah. Fucking kill some machines out there, man, you yeah. know what I mean? Some of the older dons that are all with like Raga Twins. Yeah. Oh, mate, how can you do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'll do like four hours of... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Every night, sometimes two places. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Amazing. Bro. Yeah, it's amazing. You know I mean? And the it longevity of people like General Levy, you know? Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, after this uh, after this podcast, like I'm going to um, back home where I live and make, uh, help make a music video with uh, General Levy after this. Really? Yeah, <laughs> You're going to do it in my garden. It's <laughs> amazing. Big up, General Levy. Yeah, Come on. Big up. Incredible. Yeah, man. In your back garden... Well, we have a little community garden, like, you uh, know, because it's another aspect of what I do as well. You know, I actually live in a housing cooperative, you know, really? which is a whole another thing that I really like to push and put out there as well as a, as a, something that people could look into. Um, like, right, if you remember CDS housing, mm-hmm. just Google that. You'll find an AZ of uh, housing associations and housing cooperatives across the country. I live in one where there's 120 of us and collectively we paid off the mortgage on the land. So now we don't pay any rent to nobody but ourselves. And that goes into our collective bank account. And then we have to sit, uh, meetings to decide how we're going to spend that money, you know. And we've actually even helped uh, set up other housing co-ops. We've helped save um, a small farm from being bought, bought out by devel- developers and so on. So, and as well, wow. we're central London, man. I'm, I'm, I, not to rub it into anyone paying like extortionate rent in London and all that, but because the way we're moving, I'm paying like currently 270 a month, all inclusive, including my internet, everything. You know what I mean? And that's not to a landlord. That's 120 of us to ourselves, you know what I mean? And it, and it wasn't even like we bought the mortgage outright. We, we paid that off like our rent to begin with, you know what I'm saying? So Wow. These are ways to move, man, you know what I'm saying? And it's the same with like workers' co-ops, which is how I want to move with what I'm chatting about, the pop-up market, mm. you know? Yeah, man. Damn. And obviously, as you know, like uh, that's to me, that's activism. You know, because yeah. people know I'm a, a loudmouth friggin' activist dude and all that, you know what I mean? But and I move a lot of things. Like me and my, for example, um, I mean, I'm from West Belfast, so that, that history can talk for itself a little bit, you know. But I also DJ for a really prolific, um, powerful uh, activist uh, sister, a powerful voice from Palestine called Shadi Mansour. Mm-hmm. And she's known as the first lady of Arabic hip hop. <clears throat> and we taught, I've toured the world many times with uh, Shadia, and um, she's like one of the, biggest artist in Arabic speaking language rap, mm. you know, so much so that when we do shows, sometimes um, 
M1 is, is like a part of the show from Dead Prez, mm. you know? Wow. Uh, yeah, man. He's like, they're kind of like backing up Shadia, you know? So we, we, we have a wicked, uh, really, really good show. And it's a powerful, um, it's powerful even just the sheer fact of who Shadia is, but also what we're, what we're saying, you know? Because we do a lot of, lot of talks and a lot of this, this, and the next. You know. Yeah, and I get what you're saying. It's like sometimes, you know, going back to the cooperatives, mm. going back to the choice of artistry, how you move, health is wealth, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, these are decisions that are that that are underpinned with um duty mm. and and um forthright. They sometimes actions speak louder than words. Actions speak the, the loudest, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like walk yeah. it how you talk it yeah, and let let those movements... It's not about people seeing you either. You uh, like you've got to recognise this is spiritual warfare, you know? Yeah. Uh, at least that's how I see it. You know, everyone c can roll their eyes to sorts of mad chat like that, but, like, I really feel we're here to um, um, grow, develop our souls, you know? Mm. Which is one of the reasons I've taken health into consideration because I know that the body is, um, like, the vessel of the soul, you know? Yeah. And I kind of recognise the soul as your field... Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, if, and if you look at the fields in the body, the heart has the most m magnetic field. Yeah. Know? So you really want to look after your heart health, first and foremost. You know, as a, as a almost daily religion, I get mm. up and do uh, 120 push ups. That's my <laughs> base. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not trying to get, I'm, I'm slim. No, but it's about, it's about resistance no, to and me, heart. To me, it's about, it's about the integrity of your bone health, mm -hmm. you know, and also the muscles of your inner organs, you know. So isometric hormesis training, putting that pressure internally getting your lymphatic system moving, mm. you know, getting everything getting everything good and tight, you know, because it's not just about your health, your physical health, it's about your spiritual health, yeah. you know, and then beyond your spiritual health is also how you move, you know, mm. what you're doing in life, you know, because if you're, if you're snaky or whatever, yeah, it doesn't matter if no one sees you because mm. all of it's going to come to light. Yeah, it's yeah, It's all yeah. going to be seen. Yeah, that's know? right. Um, like people clock that energy straight away. Yeah, no, I, I don't even mean like now, but... I, I mean, that's just my philosophy on um, the afterlife as well, mm. you know what I mean? Because I've had uh, some really deep experiences with plant medicine and so really, on, right, right. where I feel like I've been in that other space where you can just see everything and everyone's, like, true heart, you know? So I know that, um, yeah, you gotta, you got you to gotta move right. Mm. I actually went to uh, the Amazon with um, in, deep in Venezuela. Yeah? Oh, yeah, man, I went, like, hundreds of kilometres up, up the Arnoco, deep into the jungle, Remote as you can get, man, you know what I mean? Not one of those tourist things that you do in Peru with the, the work buddies, yeah? This is, <laughs> me and um, uh, Nati, you know Nati? Yeah, sing, of course. The soul singer, reggae singer? Um, yeah, me, I, I was, I'm working with Nati, innit? We were running a night called uh, Vibes and Pressure mm -hmm. at the Jago. Used mm -hmm. to be Passing Clouds. Very much a Nayabingi grounded Rasta vibration mm -hmm. night, you know? Uh, so again, spiritually rooted, you know? So me and Nati and a group of, more, group of us, we traveled because um, we had this opportunity to go and visit this shaman and to be shown around um, some sites, some sacred sites. And, um, yeah, it was a very life-affirming experience without getting too deep into it. If you want to learn about that, though, we have a documentary on a um, Global Faction YouTube channel called Release the Fear. Wow. And that's uh, basically documenting the journey. Uh, our brother Apex Zero from I Am Hip Hop mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. magazine, he yep. came to, to film it. You know, We didn't know it was going to be a documentary. It just ended up being a little documentary. So That's so yeah. sick. It's powerful, bro, man. Yeah. There's some stuff in that documentary. You'll see, man, like uh, the older trees. You know, they, they see those documentaries that chat about conspiracy yeah. theories about yeah. the older trees being giant trees and mountain stumps being yeah. uh, uh, tree trunks. I know exactly what you mean. Bro, that yeah. shit is real, man. Really? Yeah, man, because we climbed at least two of them. And it's, that shit is basically like petrified wood. It just really bent my mind on like, um, say, probably not a better way of saying it, like the deception of the world. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the truth being a lot, m being a lot more to the truth, you know what I mean? Wow. As far as like scale and time and yeah. our history, you know, when you look at all the megalithic ruins and all that stuff and you have those... Yeah, man. So I'm, look, I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking at life differently. You know what I mean? I'm so intrigued <laughs> by all of this. It's just. Yeah. I mean, these are pod individual podcasts in themselves. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, and I'm not really like one that you, you're looking to get me on camera, man. I'm the. Yeah, I'm I was going to say this is this was yeah. a very rare moment. It's really. rare, man. You know, like me yeah. and Logic were doing a radio show, uh, which yeah, is big actually, up Logic, by the way. Yeah, big up Logic, man. We haven't even Come spoke on. about People's Army yet. Yeah, That's yeah, a whole exactly. Chapter as hold well, tight you know? on that. Serious, yeah, man. People's army logic is my brother, man. Yeah. Like, uh, from, 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 
after work, we were managed for so long. Mm. Um, I think Logic is someone else who came into my more immediate circle, mm. somebody I was working with a lot. Him and um, the craftsmen, like um, uh, Frank and all mm -hmm. that, you know. Uh, Mike Righteous, I sh shout out Mike Righteous, because he was a younger in the um, craftsmen. What's that, Mike? Oh, Tom Mike. <laughs> Yeah, he was a younger in the in the um, craftsman. He was coming to Speaker's Corner when he was like sixteen, you know. So was Flip Chicks actually. Yeah. yeah? Okay, good. So I remember Flip Chicks. I got Flip Chicks' first studio mm -hmm. session. Yeah, mm -hmm. because he won an open mic competition at Speaker's Corner, and the prize was um, studio time in Brixton and a beat from Chemo. What? You know. So yeah, you could look at Speaker's Corner being a launchpad for like high yeah. focus as well as many other things. You know. But yeah, me and Mike wow. Righteous, I just did a tour with him. I was DJing for him. We did a UK tour. It was great, man. Brilliant artist. I remember when I first saw him, I thought he's one of the best rappers in the country. He was only young because he was he was hyping or he was doing ad libs for um, Frantic Frank and Manic Mike mm -hmm. and Prodigal Son, which is the craftsman at the time. But his cadence and delivery mm. just shot through all of them. I thought, whoa, whoa. Like, this, this dude's clarity is mm. bad, man. Back you know? in so it. I still rate Righteous. I'm happy mm. to see him still moving now. And, and, and his heart is passionate, mm -hmm. man. You know what I mean? And Logic as well, obviously, you know, because Logic's like the general of yeah. what we would call the People's Army. Big time. Yeah. I don't know if you know about how why People's Army come about. No, tell me. It tell us. Basically, uh, we got, uh, Speaker's Corner got shut down, man. Right. It got shut down, you know. I kind of had to end it, but, I ha but at the same time, I have to say it got shut down. It got shut down by police. Wow. But, yeah, because we weren't just a normal rap night, man. You know, we were word sound power, you know. Mm. And as well mm. as um, people being very vocal about particular issues, we, I would have speakers come through. You know, like I had the lawyer of the family of John Charles Menendez, I had people for, straight out of Guantanamo Bay. Wow. <laughs> had um, a lot of different organizations like Doctors Without Borders, Node ID, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, we're very much on that aspect of uh, activism. There's a few, wow. a few times where I actually like marched the entire Speakers Horner crowd from Jam straight up to um, Lambeth Police Station to fill out complaints forms. Wow. About something Damn, that we've been that talking. That must have been a busy night. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Lambeth. Yeah, they hated me, man. They yeah. hated us, you know? That's, a, that's and, the and, way to do it. <laughs> and on top of that, we had a reputation because most of our people were probably already being watched mm. for one reason or another. You know, we had like activist rappers like Loki and that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Being regulars at our night. But we also had like a big percentage of our crowd all being prolific vandals. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, know what saying? you mean, actually. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. But um, shout out Steez, shout out Sham. Yes, you know? come on. You know, HQ Frontline Hip Hop Supplies. Legendary. Is somewhere I would hang out a lot, mm. you know, because like Steez is my brother, man. I ain't seen him in ages. And if he's watching yeah. this, man, Oh, tight, Steve. Come on. I'm sorry, but I don't see you enough, man. I miss you, bro. Big up Sham as well. Absolutely. Sham's cool as fuck. My guy. You know? yeah. yeah. He was my he was my roadie. He we, he would do my merchandise on tour. Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, Sham's yeah. a brother, bro. It, that's people's yeah. right there. But yeah, Steve's man was a powerhouse aside alongside me when it came to like street teaming for Speaker's Corner. Serious. I yeah, don't doubt man. that for a second. Yeah. And um, as well, like um, a couple of other writers, like uh, Crimean and Zombie. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Used to um, help. Crimean, uh, man. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Yeah, they put, like Zombie and Crimean both did different flyers for us and stuff. And I've actually still got some uh, artwork on boards yeah, from them zombie, guys man. in the house. Come on. You know? Mm. But yeah, like I'm saying, like a lot of people are being watched mm. coming in and out of our venue, mm. you know what I mean? And then there was like an instance where there was a bit of trouble, but nowhere like, no, nothing like it doesn't already happen in better places, you mm. know? So, yeah, Lambeth Police Station told the, vi the venue that uh, for our night to continue, it needed to be a members-only night, and they wanted mm. their security to have um, little cameras. Mm. So, uh, and otherwise, we can't um, continue the, well, the name, like Speaker's that, Corner. Yeah, I couldn't do Speaker's Corner in Lambeth Borough. Um, and at that same time, uh, Craftsman had something in a bar, like something about, we need a people's army. Da -da 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 -da. Frantic Frank got carried away and made about 5,000 hoodies or some shit, you know what I mean? And then we were like, all right, it's people's army. So, and we did a night in um, Cold Harbor Lane um, in a little alleyway in a, in a guy's um, sort of shubs. It was like a bit more of a blue oh, wow. shubs. Yeah, it, was, it was going back into the sort of squat party thing, but it was, mm. um, it was a, someone's uh, space. So it could be promoted as a private space. And that same year, the smoking man came in as well. Yeah. Oh. So smoking ban was 
trying to was kind yeah. of killing the vibe inside anyway. Killing it anyway, yeah. You know, so when we when we moved the night round the corner to the Cold Harbor Lane there, you know, it was it was it was pretty pretty great timing because one people could blaze inside. You know, Skinny Man loved that. Shout out Skinny Man. Because he, he, he just dropped his tune, Skinny, uh, Smoking Ban, yeah? And he had his Smoking Ban van, innit? So he'd turn up with his van. He'll be in there, like, they're all just gas that they could smoke inside. Yeah, he used to show up all the time. Yeah, right? yeah he used to man. show <laughs> Yeah, man. And um, it was really good vibes. And, and I have to say, like, people were on their best behavior. You know, down, down mm. speakers, for some reason... Sometimes you would get people trying to bully other people or try to rob people, mm. you know. So I, I always made sure I had my crew there mm, for to, to make, back up. Yeah, yeah, just to be on top, just to make sure like uh, certain people weren't 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 misbehaving. You know what I mean? <clears throat> oh yeah. But when I moved, when we moved deeper into um, uh, ends, <laughs> mm. nobody. Uh, Everywhere was just best behavior. It was really good vibes. Maybe because they were in the ends. Huh? <laughs> Maybe because they were deep. In That's ends. what I'm saying. People knew not to misbehave, yeah. you, man. I think I think there was a l- there was a little bit more level of respect about where they were at. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, man. And um, that only went on social about for psychology a year. of that. This yeah. uh, huge. No, it's deep. Yeah. So those nights, anyway, would come mm. under the People's Army Night banner, and then People's Army as a movement, so called, never really had any um, like written constitution or nothing like that it was just a very generalized idea that we as a group of artists that affiliate ourselves with this uh see it upon ourselves as a responsibility to uh, also encourage people to be responsible with their art mm. you know to be conscientious of what they're saying and this and the next mm. and how they're moving oh, you know that's yeah, really what yeah. people's army was about and obviously like you, you can delve in and dig and find some some hypocrite there or this that and the next but mm. you know like like any group you know what i mean yeah. which is one of the reasons i don't really like to affiliate with anything or anyone mm. even though i've created brands well, <laughs> i yeah. just associate with myself from myself all the time man i'm just mm. myself you know what i mean like because sometimes i don't want to bring anyone else's down anyone else down with my opinions mm. on stuff because i'm you. quite vocal about things you know? I mean, this is a celebration of you, this episode. And I also I feel like... That, yeah, man, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, this is about, like you say, future forward as well as past. I, and also, um, again, I can't I can't highlight any sh- more strongly that emphasise that you have, through ferocious moral independence, you have garnered yourself such a legacy that is truly, like, it's so unique and you know worth celebrating. It's so oh, special. I appreciate that, man. Real talk, like it's like I said, you know, you're trying to bring me on a memory lane. I'm always thinking, what's next? Because like, um, what is next? What is next? Uh, what is next? Well, I told you my idea for the um, the pop up uh, market sound system thing and building mm. sound now and that for that. You know, um, I'm actually going to be calling that project interference. Interference. Yeah, man. Mm. You know, which is I, thought, I thought supermarket sweet would have been the <laughs> one. <laughs> supermarket sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, now interference is like a term in physics, mm. you know, um, and you can have destructive or constructive. So I'm dealing with constructive interference nice. in the world, you know what I mean? And I also like the idea of being like a meddling but a good gremlin no in way, this Babylon, yes. you know what I'm saying? In the machine. Yeah. yeah. But also like something else that we didn't even talk about, man. I've got a long history working with Congo Nati. Oh, big you know? Congo Nati. Congo Nati oh. is my bro good brother man you know like mm. i've actually been djing for him but like, occasionally as like rebel mc we go back like that wow. you know, rebel mc and tenor fly yeah yeah rest in peace yeah man fly. or angel tenor yes, fly yes, it was yes. his birthday just passed that's um, correct absolutely at the start of july day yeah, yeah that's right i want to turn it into a national holiday july 7th hmm. tenor fly day man we'll talk know? yeah so uh to be honest i've always loved uh jungle music but i've never really played it up mm. until a certain point when i started rocking with um with rebel um i've always played reggae i've always mm. played steppers i've always mm-hmm. played dancehall i've just had a thing for reggae steppers and dancehall especially the real rebel reggae you know mm. i really it's the same with the hip-hop fight, mm. like fight the power stuff mm. that that shit got me because it, 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 no, it's not just that it spoke to me it spoke to my my, my situation mm. in belfast i felt like i had a relative uh irrelevant um oh, yeah, i don't know what the term is but you know i felt like i had a connection to what was being said mm. a lot of rap Hip hop, you know, and then obviously like they're getting down with the breaking and that, but um, reggae, or like anywhere in the world, Belfast people just think Bob Marley, mm. you know. But I definitely delved in and found what reggae was really about. Mm. 
you know. In fact, it was it was reggae that probably led me towards my health journey, mm-hmm. you know, because of the whole idea of yeah, I- Ital living and mm-hmm. li- liberty and all that, you know. Um, so yeah, um, Congo Night, I bring that up because on August the 2nd, I don't know if that's going to come out before. Oh, no, we'll be full then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wicked. Well, in that case, August the 2nd, my brother, Friday night, we're back where it all started, Brixton Jam. Wow. Celebrating 30 years of Congo Natty's journey. Yeah. Wow. And we're going to have an all-star cast in the building. Wow. Rebel will be on the decks. I'll be on the decks. Um, Mighty Mo will be on the decks. Mm. Our brother, DJ Regal, who is part, who's a... Um, doesn't get mentioned enough, but he's part of Congo Night Crew as well. Nice, nice. Congo's son, Congo Dubs, will be on the decks, and uh, DJ Funky Flirt, which wow. anyone who's in the jungle should know about. We're basically going to go back to back all night, and we've got a bag of vocalists. We've got Top Cat, we've got the Ragga <laughs> Twins, we've got uh, Sweetie Irie, oh. we've got my sisters Nancy and Phoebe. Wow. Rebel's daughter, Kaya Fire. Yeah, hold on, Kaya uh, Fire. Blackout JA, um, another brother from Jamaica coming over called Avalanche. Wow. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, vocals. There's going to be people that I might not... I, can't, I don't think I can mention their names yet. Yeah. No, there's going to be a few... Yeah, some surprises. Yeah, man. There's going to be a couple of surprises. Though, Focus is starting off hot out there. Yeah, man. And as well, like for people who uh, think jungle too much in the other room, Wicked DJs playing dancehall, Afro beats and reggae. Yo, that's... A, you know what? Mm. Come on, summertime vibes. Mm. It sounds like the spot, yeah. people. Yeah, man. So, like, that's really what's next. I mean, what's really next is, like, I'm playing Mighty Mo's birthday party tomorrow. I'm really looking yeah, forward to that's that. Gonna be, you know? That's going to be. August the 2nd, I want everybody to come out and represent. You know, yeah, you know it is. That's going to be a really good You're London, night. you know yeah. where it is. Yeah. And look out for, uh, look out for anything um, related uh, to uh, all the people that I mentioned as well. People's Army, Congo Natty, anything you see Manu's Do it. doing. Like, uh, it's all Jump family, on that Instagram or family. TikTok or wherever you're at. You it's know? all community, you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm like one of those ones who's not, I'm not in one single lane. I'm, I'm like that as a DJ, actually. Mm. You know what I mean? You, you, you know me from hip-hop, mm. right? Some people don't even know that I'm hip-hop. You know, some people would just know me as jungle or just reggae. Some people just know me for Afro beats and yeah. I'm a piano and house music. You know, some people know me just for... a. Uh, b-boy shit that's the way it should you be know? that's the way culture should take you yeah some people know that i'm all over the shop some people don't know how to promote me so they don't bother booking me <laughs> <They're> charming <laughs> but that's where we create our own events exactly know what i mean exactly yeah man. my brother it's yeah. honestly it's been a pleasure having you on the show yeah man respect <laughs> banger man. my brother Yo, man, you're the legend bro man killer killer Long bro time my guy oh do you know what i remember you know i've actually uh, been um um, working on a little health brand as well. Oh, yo, you got anything here? I do. I've got a, something I wanted to, 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 to share with you, man. Oh, I make, wow. I make something for your voice. Oh, jeez. Yeah, okay. I make a cough sweet. It's, it's, it's for the throat. Uh, these are just a little sample. Oh, yeah? wow. But I call them singers because they help you sing. Yeah. You make this? Yeah, man. Free. There's just free ingredients, man. It's raw propolis. Yeah. You know, from the honeybee. Raw, mm-hmm. raw honey mm-hmm. from the stingless bee, yeah. Stingless bees sourced from the Mayan rainforest, a protected region of the Mayan rainforest in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Mm. You know, like these bees are like uh, wild bees, like the local community look after them. You know, and then it's eucalyptus oil. You know, so the eucalyptus is from there as well. So it's stingless bee honey, propolis, and eucalyptus. So it should Tastes good, by the way. Yeah, it should help you um, mm. make everything s- the saliva pop. You know, yeah, I mean? it's doing it. Yeah, and the, the, the flowers, My God. there's over a million flowers that those bees are visiting to create yeah. that propolis, you know? And a lot of them are quite uh, um, uh, enthusiastic and so on, you know? This is legit. Yeah, man, I appreciate it, man. Incredible. I've got, I got the artwork coming, the, the, the brand is called Wild Type. It's really tastes good, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I've got a couple of herbal brands as well because I've been really studying uh, everything to do with metabolic disease. So I'm quite focused on diabetes. Yeah, you know? yeah, too right. Yeah, really focused on diabetes. Uh, and cardiovascular disease so i've got a lot of herbal um compounds put together for that and also um on a one-to-one basis i always let people know that there's no magic pill there's no magic herb this is a lifestyle situation Mm. because exercise regimen is so important most important thing nothing works like i i I got into this originally i was introduced to a lot of this through sebi you know but through study i can see the i can see the pros and cons and yeah. Uh, what the truths and the errors, and you know what I mean. Mm. So I, I've gone much further, and I do acknowledge that um, you need to move your body. It's the mm. m- most nutritional thing you can do is to move your body. 
the, the thing that's killing everybody out here is sitting still, sedentary lifestyles, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, and the moral story is, is like, you may be really busy in your life, but there are, don't lose your life no. by being too busy. You that's the you thing. Look you can actually, yourself, yeah, man. look after yourself. You'll find yourself have a lot more time to do stuff. Yeah, so yeah. you don't need a rush. Yeah. You know? No, no, no. Five. Compartmentally, like, I do like, my, my workout routine a day is less than 10 minutes. But I do so much, and I know that's getting my whole met metabolism moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just to motivate shit, just set you off. I mean, I'll do, I'll do like one minute ex exercises. How many push ups can you do in one minute? Right, you know? Dude, yeah. this stuff is amazing. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm happy, Gav. Thank you so <laughs> I'm much. I'm glad you like him, bro, man. I'll show you the artwork. <laughs> yeah, in a minute. Bro, yeah. yeah. Right, let, let's get out of here so I can check some more of this stuff. Yeah, um, no worries, Killer Gala podcast out here. was out of fashion, my brother. Come on, snap one inside the place. What more do you want? What more do you want? Oh, you want some big of up, this? Big up, big up, big up. You want some of this right here? Mm. <laughs> you have to go find my guy. Yeah, man. You know all of it. You'll find it. Um, listen, Sharon's caring, all right? Tell her friend to tell her friend. You know what I mean? Crumb don't pay, but neither do they. You stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> Who's it? <laughs> yeah, that was sick. Okay, yeah. Yeah, man.